Uh, I'm Steve Gibson. I'm a vice president at Gearbox Software. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know it's a very common uh, question, uh, yeah, uh, but I'm really interested. We do get that question, and uh, um, there are, are some like game mechanic similarities in a lot of ways. Uh, that is a huge task though, to do an MMO. Uh, that's not something that we're really like actively pursuing at the moment. Yes, um, but we do see the, the, the possibilities there, but no. at the moment, no. I'm a huge fan, yes. so I'm really waiting uh, until you, you say something about <laughs> MMO RPG, and yep. then, then I will just quit my, my job and <laughs> sit well, all you day. You saw what we were showing here actually is with Borderlands 2, we were trying to get more of that end game content, the stuff where you can keep playing and, and the uh, things like the additional playthrough and the first one, it was just everything, the numbers went up, but a lot of all the enemies were pretty much the same, just harder. In Borderlands 2, though, the true Vault Hunter mode, you actually have different enemy attacks and different enemy t styles and names, uh, different gear. Like we actually really, really um, up the how much the end game or the additional game, new game plus whatever you want to call it, does, and also the raid boss stuff that we threw in there. So that we're we're trying to make it much a much more uh, replayable and also just gaming as a hobby is what we like to think of it as. You know, we can keep playing it and it keeps rewarding you. The, the way the level mechanics work are very similar, so if the guy is a couple levels higher, it gets really hard. That's why uh, Terramorphus there is actually level 52, you probably noticed then. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're using a lot of those same mechanics, but what we've also done is when you want to play with other players now who are on different quests, we actually have a system where you can sync back up and they can join you and it not, no longer get the eligibility problems. So your other friends can join you and, and catch up quicker now. Um, there's a little bit more there. Uh, the people don't. The the amount of driving is very similar to the first one as far as percentage-wise. Uh, but there's four player vehicles this time and a few more loadouts. But this time we also have a bunch of uh, skins and, and customization of the visuals that you can do. Much like the characters, you actually do have the vehicles as well now. And those are droppable loot, so you can earn them and find them and, and buy them this time. Um, so. Once we submitted a certification, which was about a month ago, we started thinking about looking at DLC. The Mechromancer was, uh, was at the top of our list because we knew that was the thing we wanted to give away for free to everyone in pre-order, right? That was like our, our number one thing. What we've also started to look at now and sort of really think about is what we're going to do for, yeah, to keep growing the game and keep experimenting. Uh, what we did in Borderlands 1 was we started, if you look at what the transition from Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2, what we did in the DLC is that we tried to explore and push the boundaries of how we made our game. We saw Zombie Island, we played with the really drastically different visuals with the, the way the trees and the, and the environment looked. And DLC 2, we started playing with game mechanics. You saw how, you know, the tournament style and those kind of different, different kind of way to play the game. On the third one, we played with storytelling. The NPCs started animating and talking to you more. Um, so I imagine what we're going to do with Borderlands 2, we're going to do that same kind of thing where we're going to try to push the boundaries and, and try different things out in each one and what we do. Um, we haven't announced any of that stuff yet, but you can imagine that we've already said that hey, we're going to we're going to try to do DLC. Like now that the game's started, that's what we're really digging into right now. We're going to see how the Micromaster does really, because uh, what the thing is when you think about DLC, sometimes the thing is if you do a character, maybe nobody cares, right? Maybe there's just something that doesn't appeal to everyone. But we know for sure whenever it's new content, new you know storyline, everyone wants to play new storyline because a lot of people already have their favorite character class. So we know for sure that that's where people will want to go. The Mechromancer is a very different kind of thing though for Borderlands. We've never done a new character class. So we're not ready to commit to the whole bunch of character classes. We've got to see how the Mechromancer really pans out first. Um, we added a little bit there. Um, what we did was we, we really liked the in-world stuff where you just melee attack and then they respond and you trigger in a fight. Um, what we've added to that now is that you can have, you can place bets on your fights. So you can actually bet loot and whoever wins the fight actually wins the loot is what we've done there. Um, most people really gravitated towards the co-op stuff though. So we really, we wanted to refine that a little bit, but the well, majority of the work really went to the single player campaign experience and the co-op experience. Okay, thank you very much.